Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Melanie Dizon. I'm the Director of Education at the Davis Finney Foundation and I am thrilled to be here today with Claudia Martinez. She is our community, our Hispanic Community Engagement Manager. Hi Claudia. Hi Mel, happy to be here. Good. Well, we're really, really excited to have you on board. So I'd love to talk a little bit about uh, the work that you've done in the past, what brought you here, and what you're excited to work on going forward. Sounds great. Okay, so can you tell us a little bit about your work and how you became interested and involved in working with the Parkinson's community? Sure. Um, my relationship with Parkinson's is a personal one because my dad was um, diagnosed with Parkinson's disease when I was living back in our hometown in Colombia. And at the time I was, um, uh, I had just started working as a primary care physician. And even though um, that allowed me to, to help him get diagnosed, you know, fairly quickly after uh, the symptoms started, then uh, um, it also was very frustrating because I, I realized that the only things that I was able to offer him were, were just taking him to a good neurologist and making sure that his, he had his medicines. But, but before, because besides that, they were, I mean, nothing else that we could offer him, not in terms of uh, education for him or our family or support uh, in terms of support groups or exercise classes, nothing. And um, it was very, very difficult and sad to see my dad kind of isolate himself because he started feeling that he was, um, he no longer belonged in groups that he, he used to to have a lot of fun being part of with family and friends. So that's um, that was kind of my first experience. And then uh, after my dad passed, I moved to the, to the United States and while in Phoenix in Arizona, I was um, eager to find out what was available for people living with Parkinson's and if it was any different from the experience that I had back home. And that's how I found out about um, the Muhammad Ali Parkinson Center at Barrow Neurological Institute. And I fell in love with um, the approach of uh, the programs they had with uh, community outreach uh, and wellness. And I saw it was uh, so different and um, had the positive impact that it had in the lives of people living with Parkinson's and their families. And then I, I definitely felt that this is something that we need to do for the Hispanic community. And that's how everything started. Great. Well, uh, I want to talk a little bit about your time there, but I, I just immediately am struck by imagining what it would feel like to get diagnosed with something and then not have all of the resources in my own language to understand it. So when you got started at the Ali Center, you know, what, what types of resources were available to people in the United States, um, even in your area in, in Spanish about Parkinson's and were they sort of cursory or uh, were there a lot of, of materials? No, unfortunately, they, I mean, we, they were some resources in terms of uh, written materials that were translated from, uh, you know, English to Spanish. But um, it, that was in 2007, actually, when I started. And um, immediately what I felt is that there was a huge lack of resources that were culturally sensitive. For the, for the community and that kind of embraced uh, the diversity of the Hispanic community and the kind of the different um, challenges that, uh, that a community that is, you know, most of the time underserved or is a minority within a larger community faces. So that's, um, that um, helped me to kind of get the, get my idea uh, of, avoiding to translate uh, only translating services or materials, but instead trying to do something uh, under a cultural lens. That's great. So when you say uh, the di diverse nature of the Hispanic community, can you talk a little bit more about that? Sure, because um, most of the time uh, people don't realize how diverse the, the community is and, and mainly, you know, probably because depending on where you live, uh, probably there is a group that is, you know, the predominant, let's say, group within the Hispanic community. But um, besides Mexico, who is our immediate neighbor, um, we have um, going all the way down to South America, 
we have uh, so many differences between, you know, our own cultures. And sometimes it is related to the way that we behave or that we communicate, the music that we hear, the food that we eat, um, even the language, because, um, you know, even though we speak Spanish, all of us, sometimes, you know, words have a total different meaning. Um, it depends where you live. And sometimes you can't even get yourself in trouble if, if you don't know how to use the right word. So yeah, so it is, a, it is a pretty diverse culture and that sometimes it's challenging, but it's also enriching if you make sure that uh, you embrace those differences and uh, people feel welcome and feel that, you know, they're appreciated and that those differences are appreciated as well. That's great. So yeah, can you talk about some of maybe the most memorable or meaningful initiatives or experiences that you worked on at the Ali Center? Sure. And um, actually there were many, but probably I will say there are three that stand up for me. And uh, one is um, that uh, I was able to start the expressive arts program. And that I did that pretty I mean, pretty quick. Uh, I was, uh, I said, I started in 2007 and in 2008, we started our first pilot and um, I still laugh because uh, people used to tell me, um, but you know, they have Parkinson's, right? So I don't think they're going to be able to paint or I don't think what they're going to paint is going to look pretty. Um, but I'm so glad that since uh, the first uh, workshop we did, they were able, the participants were able to prove uh, the people who thought that way wrong. And not only that, but also the benefits that um, that the program brought uh, in terms of, you know, finding a new way of expression, finding uh, a way to increase their self-esteem, and finally helping us um, to raise awareness about Parkinson's disease under such a different angle uh, that was um, very appealing to the to the general public. So that was a, a wonderful way. And we did that because um, we added um, an annual art show and uh, that was open for the community at large. And that still is a, a wonderful way to raise awareness. Uh, the second, I will say, was um, the way that we started um, kind of sharing our education, um, our educational programs to the larger community, because, um, I mean, I said we were um, based in Phoenix, Arizona, but um, I used to receive calls from people from all over the U.S. and then also um, be contacted by organizations, small groups, um, individuals from the Latin American community. So way before the pandemic, uh, like around 2013, uh, we started to uh, share webinars and then our conferences to do them, uh, share them live and virtually. So this was a uh, uh, great because it allowed us to create um, a network that's still pretty active and that uh, it's uh, is a wonderful way to find out um, what what things we're missing or what opportunities we have for collaboration. Right. And finally, I will say the Promotores program because um, that's- I know about that one, really. Well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It is it is unique because uh, it was created specifically for the Hispanic community in Phoenix or in Arizona, actually, uh, to respond to the Hispanic families who were isolated or more underserved, and that even though uh, wanted uh, to be uh, to receive some sort of support, they didn't come to our programs for a variety of barriers. So this um, this program was designed to kind of overcome those barriers. And um, it was done with the, with the help of volunteers who were care partners, had a loved one with Parkinson's disease and helped us create uh, this program that um, was delivered uh, in a, with a storytelling format and um, based on all their experiences they they had with their families. Oh, that's great, I love it. So what drew you, you've done so much work at the Ali Center, been there for a long time. What drew you to the work of the Davis Finney Foundation? Well, actually I had the opportunity to, to partner with the Davis Finney while I was working with the Muhammad Ali Parkinson Center. We did two, um, 
two of the victory summits and back in 2013 in Phoenix and then 2019 in, sorry, in Tucson. And um, I love the philosophy of collaboration that the foundation has. And uh, I had the opportunity to, to see it in action, which I love. And also um, what definitely drew me to the foundation was uh, its initiative of uh, healthy Parkinson's communities. Because uh, I, when I saw it, when I read about it, I said, this is something that we really need in terms of advancing um, you know, our efforts in the Hispanic community because it would allow um, that Hispanics with Parkinson's and leaders from the community get the the necessary training, get the right tools in order, you know, to have, make sure that their voices count and that they are participating actively in the changes they want to see in their own communities. Yeah, that's great. So can you talk a little bit about what it means to be the Hispanic Community Engagement Manager and then what role that plays in our Healthy Parkinson's Communities Initiative? What particular pieces are you going to be working on? Yes, well, actually, it's a it's a it's a challenge, but it's a, a a great challenge for me because it implies that um, I will need to work with community members in to make sure that we adapt the program um, to be as as I explained before, uh, culturally sensitive and uh, include all the diversity that uh, angles that I talked about and make sure that it uh, translates, uh, not into translating words, but translates in meaning that, that it serves the, the, the needs of the, of the community. And um, it's wonderful that, you know, I've, I've been already working with, uh, with the rest of the team. And I see that there are, you know, amazing opportunities, uh, the, the materials, the trainings, uh, also the network that we will be able to create. Uh, so what I'm going to be, uh, or the first steps that, um, that our team is going to take is to make sure that we start with the ambassador leadership program, uh, working with uh, a task force so that uh, it's not only my vision, but also the, the vision and the feedback of uh, Hispanics living with Parkinson's disease going through the process of training that uh, are going to help us shape it so that it's um, culturally appropriate. And, uh, and then also starting to, to work with a pilot um, a project with uh, community leaders interested in the starting the community uh, action committees as well. well. That's great. So you've mentioned a lot of different things. I can tell you're excited about it. Let's do a, we get to wave the uh, miracle wand and it's five years from now. What does, what does this look like? What what has happened as a result of having somebody who's truly committed and actually a couple of team members, right? Who are truly committed to making sure that our healthy Parkinson's communities are inclusive of the Hispanic population. Yeah, well, my my goal and, and hope is that um, let's say five years from now, we, uh, we have a robust uh, network of uh, um, Hispanic ambassadors and um, also community action committees, and that we have a, a map with a lot of, you know, yeah. dots and uh, triangles and and all those little uh, signs to see where we have ambassadors, where we have community action committees, where um, are some of the community grants being received. And that this network um, is not only active in the United States, but also in Latin America, because I think that's a, a wonderful opportunity for the whole uh, Spanish speaking community at large. That's great. Well, we are thrilled to have you and so glad to hear a little bit more about the work that you're doing. And I look forward to continuing to catch up and uh, stay up to date on all the great projects that you're working on. Thank you, Melon, for sure. I uh, will keep you posted. Great. Thanks, Claudia.